Hey, Inside Crypto people, how are you doing? It has been a week since the Bitcoin spot ETFs launched, and well, things have taken a roller coaster turn. We'll talk about all of that today. We're going to talk about miners and mining companies. We're also going to talk about you know, the price dropping down as well, hence that roller coaster reference. We're going to talk about uh, adoption of Bitcoin and what's happening there. So stay tuned. Let's get right into the price chart and check where Bitcoin is at of this morning of me recording this show on a Tuesday June 16th, 2024. You see Bitcoin, the seven-day high of $48,494.62, almost five days ago on the 11th of January, 2024. And then you've seen sort of a steady decline, right? And as of today, we're at $42,679.82. And again, this is an interesting story, right? Because a lot of people have been like, yeah, you know, there was that narrative of, yes, when the ETFs get approved, you know, Bitcoin's going to skyrocket and everyone's going to be driving Lamborghinis. But at the same time, a lot of people are like, well, this is common sense, right? When Bitcoin ETFs were approved, right, people would be buying Bitcoin, but there aren't other narratives into play. I saw something on Twitter about people shorting various ETFs, and that was a big deal. I saw people saying, oh, you know, Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust, you know, People were sort of getting out of their positions now that they could on Grayscale. But then, you know, other people like the Bloomberg reporter, Eric Balchunas, he pointed out that Grayscale last week had net inflows. I mean, like more people bought into the Grayscale ETF than they sort of sold out of it, right? So that's an interesting story. And let's see how things develop this week or in the next week when we have our next show. And let's move on to today's first story. All right, today's first story is just this, right? Bitcoin's technical analysis suggests deeper pullback to the 38K analyst. Bitcoin's RSI divergence signals correction 10X research set. I've never heard of 10X research, but RSI is uh, what's called technical analysis. For those of you who don't know, like I, I also don't 100% know about technical analysis, but basically technical analysis, you check out the 21 shares research calls, our current head of research, EMEA. Adrian always does technical analysis or he knows a lot about it. Check out some of these past analyst calls. But yeah, and this is not the first people to say this. A few articles have come out in the last week or so, especially over the weekend saying, yeah, you know, Bitcoin's probably going to go down to 38K. That being said, right, there are also bullish signals. Bullish signals means very positive signals, very happy signals. People are saying that Bitcoin might actually go up, right? And, and go up and, and reach all-time highs. People are still thinking about the narrative of, yes, uh, Bitcoin's an, an upward trajectory. You might see those charts where it's like a sort of like an, a rising mountain almost in a sense. I don't know the official terminology. And you look at the headline, it says Bitcoin has declined over 5% to $42,600 since spot ETFs debuted in the U.S. on Thursday in what appears to be a classic sell the fact price action. So that's really interesting. And I think there definitely has been that sort of sense where people had like, yeah, this is what it is. Let's sell it. The sell-up could continue over the near term. Like that's something to emphasize, right? Near term, the next month, the next two to three months. And again, the founders of Pinwood Shares, right? You know, Ophelia was on a podcast or doing a video where she was saying it's going to take months for um, AUM and people to sort of get into these ETFs. And there are a fair number of them. There's Fidelity, there's Pinwood Shares, there's Grayscale, of course, there's Invesco. So all of these people did have net inflows of money last week, right? Or most people did. So um, that's something to take into account. And I mean, let us know what you think. Do you think Bitcoin's going down to 38K? Is it coming up? Are we bullish? Is it still bearish? I saw someone that was on the podcast last year, right? Uh, Sherry Young, who lives in Singapore. And she was like, this year is going to be a, a negative economic year and things aren't going to look great. And of course, we've had various signals about that with the ongoing war in Ukraine and Russia with, you know, things happening in China and the Chinese economy. So lots of things to talk about. Let's move on to today's second story. Right, TerraWolf and CleanSpark, best position minus for Bitcoin having. They mine in Bitcoin and the world, they secure the network. And these are some of the biggest companies, right, which is not the gaming company that has League of Legends. TerraWolf and CleanSpark. You know, the Bitcoin halving is happening sometime in April, May 2024. And what the halving means is that Bitcoin miners will start to earn less money. So this is a research report from CoinShares. CoinShares projects the average cost of production for crypto miners post halving at $37,856 per Bitcoin. So at the moment, Bitcoin at $42,000 at the halving, 
you're making five thousand dollars per bitcoin you produce so that's a decent profit this article does show an interesting chart that i would like to show you guys and hopefully you can see it clearly so it shows here it says bitcoin mining cash cost per bitcoin post having and it shows clean spot with the clear winning here right it shows $26,927. And then we have Bitmain with 29000 Of course, Bitmain has a huge advantage because they produce a lot of the Bitcoin mining equipment. Then we have CoinMint and TerraWolf. And then we have Iris Energy and Cypher Mining and Bitrider, Riot. Uh, Riot is there on the cusp. But again, in a bull cycle, I guess most of these companies. Then we have all the way on the other end is Stronghold Digital Mining with $74,000 to produce one Bitcoin, that is expensive. So in a bull case, you've seen numbers all the way from $100,000 per Bitcoin to like a million dollars per Bitcoin, right? So if it reaches that bare minimum of $100,000, even the most expensive miner is still going to be making money. So that's good for them. The third story for today is, of course, the big, huge asset manager, another trillion dollar asset manager, Vanguard, to put Bitcoin features from its platform. So... As, as all these big players, you know, BlackRock, Vanguard, Invesco, Fidelity, or not Vanguard, all these other players were like, okay, let's do a Bitcoin spot ETF right, or an ETF, right? And Vanguard was like, no, we're not going to do this, right? And then they were also, they had existing Bitcoin futures products on their platform that as a Vanguard customer could have access to these products. And now, maybe not all of a sudden, right? They're saying like, no, we, we're not doing any crypto at all, which is why this cool image is, is there, right? Uh, let me remind you as well, check out the full article from these reporters because they do deserve your support. These publications do deserve your support. The electronic publications are now struggling in a sense, so they do deserve our support. So yeah, the narrative I've seen on social media, looking at a few articles, researching this has been like, Vanguard has always been a traditional asset manager. They were never super into crypto. Them pulling out all crypto products just means that like, okay, they, you know, maybe they see all the competition, right? Because a lot of big companies like we're offering crypto on our platform and they want to be the company that says, yes, we are traditional. We're going to take that, that, that story of, you know, we're the place where we're not involved with this crypto craziness, right? Right. Or uh, the scams or whatever you want to call it. Right. And there are still a fair number of people like, I can't believe this Bitcoin spot ETF was approved. I can't believe this is done. The SEC even came out and said, yeah, you know, we, we approve this, but it doesn't mean that we support these products and they're still highly volatile. So this could be a, a line of differentiation in the sand where Vanguard says, yes, we're offering you all these traditional asset classes and we're not involved with crypto so that if and when crypto does die or goes to zero, like that's a big story that a, a lot of people say is crypto is going to go to zero. Your assets will be safe, right? So it's interesting. I mean, I think it, it's a very valid move on Vanguard's part. And I think there's definitely a huge, not a huge, there's definitely a demand from the global populace for an asset manager who is not, you know, jumping on the crypto hype train if there is one, right? It's just unfortunate if you're a Vanguard customer, that doesn't mean you can't open up an account with another platform or another company. Let's move on to our next story. So our next story or our second to last story for this week is Bitcoin long short ratio hits multi-month high on Binance. Uh, the Bitcoin long short ratio on Binance futures hit a multi month high. On chain data shows the majority of derivatives traders have taken a bullish stance in the past 24 hours, according to Coin Glass data. So this is from uh, one day ago, literally 12 hours ago, when this article was published by Brian McLennan. So, a bullish stance again, this is the opposite of stories we just heard like earlier on, right, in today's podcast. So, shorts are people who are like, okay, the price is going to go down, and longs are like, the price is going to go up. And, you know, after the ETF, lots of people are like, oh my God, this is going to keep going up and up and up. And there were lots of liquidations. Liquidations mean people lost all the money that they had bet on. So let's have a look at the data. So you can see the data right here, right? Is that as of January, right? We can see that that sort of uptick all the way to sort of the ratio of three, which is pretty high. And we can see, I mean, this ratio hasn't been that high. It looks like June, 2023. So like almost six months ago. So I think almost, we'd say six months ago, we even saw like an uptick in crypto interest and performance and action, that sort of stuff, as people were sort of like, okay, the, the bull market or the bear market is sort of getting over. And then the article sort of says, okay, last week before multiple spot Bitcoin ETFs were approved, the long short ratio was 
at a low of 0.86. However, after approval, the ratio rose as traders speculated on the asset appreciation, right? So let's emphasize that point, speculation. That's all this sort of long short ratio is. It's people saying, this is probably what the price is going to be. And some of these are, I would say a lot of these are professional traders. Uh, you know, we had a trader on from eToro on last year. And, you know, these are guys who, who their living is day trading or, and you've seen the posts on Reddit about day traders. So that's, that's something to take with a grain of salt, right? Is that these guys, what it is, their full-time job to trade, you know, they could be wrong. Maybe Bitcoin doesn't go up. Maybe it goes down or maybe it goes up a lot. This is just another sort of piece of information to take into your brain of, of all the pieces of information that you have and think about what you want to do with your cryptocurrency in the future. All right, today's the last story. But enough with the happy stories. Argentina sees first Bitcoin rental agreement. Uh, that is awesome. By Yusara Anwar Hamid. January 15th, again, yesterday's story, right? But as you know, like even with the new president of Argentina, Argentina's inflation was still at 211% was the data I saw in January. And so it makes sense that as somebody who's a landlord wanting to get paid in Bitcoin uh, for rent, says the contract stipulates that the tenant will pay the equivalent of $100 in Bitcoin per month to the landlord. By what a national cryptocurrency exchange will be used to determine the exchange rate and execute the payments. This type of rental agreement became possible Following the executive order issued by Javier Malay last year, that's the current Argentinian president, or the new Argentinian president, which opened the door for contracts denominated in cryptocurrency. Well, Bitcoin has been used in real estate sales before, this appears to be the first issue in instant pop its use in an Argentine rental culture. So again, I can see this happening in lots of different places like Argentina, like Venezuela, like Sri Lanka as well, which is also places undergoing a lot of economic you know, upheaval or turmoil. Because again, we are in a bull cycle. And I remember something from one of our researchers, which like, you know, Bitcoin is becoming a less and less volatile, you know, as it ages, as it gets older. So that's always great news. And uh, that's it for today's story. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast. It has always been fantastic to be here talking about crypto news, talking about Bitcoin news. As always, I appreciate the support from last week. Don't forget to check out the shorts on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Instagram is Inside Crypto. Uh, and Facebook and YouTube as well. Check out the shorts if you're a shorts person because we know lots of people are. And uh, let us know what you think, right? Comment, you know, send me an email, right? Uh, Korean at 21.co, right? That is the email. I should remember my own email. And then we will see you same time next week for more news, more crypto, and more fun. See you guys next week.